there on the record. The time now is 8.39 a.m. This is the videotaped deposition of Francois J. Castain being taken at the offices of Miller Canfield, Paddock and Stone, 1400 North Woodward, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Today is Thursday, March 14, 1996. My name is Nancy Scott, video operator and notary public in Macomb County, Michigan, acting today in Oakland County, Michigan. The attorneys will now introduce themselves and the reporter will then swear in the witness. Uh, my name is Larry Coben. I represent the Tenalia family. My name is Steve Ott. I represent Chrysler Corporation. And with me here today is Luann Vanderweel, Senior Staff Counsel of Chrysler Corporation. Good morning. Could you please try to keep your voice up so that the uh, both the court reporter and the video can pick it up. Thank you. Uh, could you state for the record your full name, please? Francois J. Castang. Uh, Mr. Castang, my name is Larry Coben. We met just a moment ago. Uh, I am here today pursuant to an order of the New Jersey Supreme Court allowing me to take your deposition. Are you aware of that, sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Castang, I'm going to ask you some questions this morning. Uh, have you ever given a deposition before? Yes. And who is your current employer? Chrysler Corporation. And what is your current position with Chrysler Corporation? I am uh, executive vice president for vehicle engineering. How long have you held the position of executive vice president for vehicle engineering for Chrysler Corporation? The exact title, only a few uh, weeks, but I've been in charge of vehicle engineering for Chrysler since 1988. Could you explain to the members of the jury uh, what your responsibilities are as executive vice president of vehicle engineering and, of course, those same responsibilities starting in 1988 through today? Uh, my job is to uh, manage a group of about um, 7,000 engineers, uh, Chrysler engineers, and a number of uh, outside um, suppliers engineers working alongside um, Chrysler to uh, engineer, test, and bring to production um, cars, trucks. Do you recall what your title was in 1988? I was uh, Vice President of Vehicle Engineering. Okay. Now, in terms of those responsibilities that you've described, uh, does that, who is it that within the corporate hierarchy that uh, makes the decisions concerning the design of new products? Is there, in, are there individuals hierarchy that have responsibility for that? Frankly, uh, customers make most of the decision. Uh, we we uh, pride ourselves in our corporation to listen to customers or prospect customers. And when we go about designing a new car, a new Jeep, or a new truck, uh, there's many ways we can go about doing that. But we finally uh, the customer is the one who decides where we go. If we, whether you know, if we look at the design, the styling of the car, the type of powertrain, or the type of feature that is contained in these new products. As uh, the executive vice president for vehicle engineering, would that in effect uh, indicate that you are, so to speak, the top engineer within the company? Yes, I am. And. Can you give us a sense, are you responsible, do you have overall supervisory responsibility for the design and manufacturing processes within the company? In a sense, I am. Like I said, I'm managing uh, a great number of people who are organized themselves in sub-teams. Each of these teams is in charge of one or product program, a new, a new car, a new truck program. And 
mm -hmm. I'm making sure that these people know um, what they are supposed to do. I'm making sure that they have the means of doing a good job at executing what they are supposed to do. I also make sure that they, have, they keep their mind open to the voice of the customer because at the end, like I said, customers decide what we do for them. Who is it that, in effect, you uh, answer to within the corporate hierarchy? I work for the president of the company. And his name? Is Robert. Um, in terms of, let's, let me address for a moment issues uh, of vehicle safety. Uh, is there a particular uh, group within engineering that has overall responsibility for looking at the issue of vehicle safety in a crash? I don't understand the question, so maybe. What, what I'm trying to understand is um, I realize that the issue of vehicle safety and looking at crash worthiness may be a multidisciplinary study. Uh, would you agree with that? Yes, it is. Uh, what I'm trying to understand, though, is if within the corporation, is there any one group that has supervisory responsibility for giving final approval on the crash worthiness of Chrysler products? Again, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, if, or, well, we design um, new cars um, uh, in great deal of respect of uh, federal regulations as far as their crash worthiness. Uh, NHTSA, the National Highway Administration, over the years has produced a great number of regulations that we follow very diligently. Uh, they cover a wide variety of parts in the car and aspects of the car. Some are crash, some are um, fuel system and other things like that. And each engineer in the company uh, designing a, a part that relates to a given standard is responsible for making sure that each part is complying with the standard and uh, tested uh, by the procedure of the standard and forms that we keep in file for NHTSA to audit also fill up with the engineers in charge of the parts. What, is, what does the term crashworthiness mean in terms of the design of a product? I don't know. Tell me. You uh, don't know the phrase? No. Okay. I'll object. It, uh, it is a legal term, I believe, not necessarily an engineering term. Well, let me make sure I'm clear of this. As the chief engineer of the company, are you at all familiar with the use of the phrase crashworthiness by the engineers of the company? Crashworthiness uh, is so vague, you have to tell me what you intend by that. 